Republicans in some states are also talking about changing the way we elect the president. They would award electoral votes by congressional district instead of winner takes all to the candidate who carries the state. Richard Louis is here with the drill down. And Richard, you found out gerrymandering had an enormous impact on the last election. Chris, you know, Democratic congressional candidates got at least 1.4 million more votes than Republicans nationwide, but then only won 33 fewer seats. Why? Because border lines that have been revised over two years to look like this one in Florida. All the way from Orlando to Jacksonville is how far this district uh, goes. And we've got North Carolina. That's another example. It looks amoeba-like, doesn't it? Not a square, not a circle, but a carefully carved congressional district to favor one party. It goes through about a dozen cities. Now, state houses across the country with Republican majorities are redrawing election district lines like that to get more Republicans to Congress than they would otherwise. These gerrymandering tactics include packing, putting voters who support your opponent into other districts opponents will already win, and cracking in close races, moving voters who might vote for your opponent out of your district. Now, gerrymandering has helped Republicans in Virginia gain eight seats in Congress to the Democrats' three, despite votes for Republican candidates being only 70,000 more. Swing state Ohio, 12 seats for Republicans and four for Democrats. But Republican candidates only beat Democrats there by 200,000 votes. Democrats do this, too. In Illinois, 54% of the popular vote went to Democrats, but they won 66% of the House seats. Maryland, Democrats with 62% of the popular vote, but 88% of the seats. All said, in 2012, Republicans outdid Democrats by a net seven seats, according to Princeton researcher Sam Wang. Now, this disenfranchisement means each Republican vote in states like Ohio and Virginia is equal to two and a half votes, Democratic votes. Also in Illinois and Maryland, up to three Republican votes equal one Democratic vote. Now, Chris, that is the math the Founding Fathers did not intend, what I just showed you there. Redistricting to them was to ensure a true people's house. Yeah, and they get redrawn again in 2020. Where did this term, uh, gerrymandering, come from? You'll find this very interesting here, Chris. Uh, gerrymandering, it celebrated its 200-year anniversary just last year. Uh, the Boston Gazette used it to describe what Massachusetts governor at the time was trying to do. His name was Governor Eldridge Jerry, and he wanted to redraw the lines to favor his party. The crazy district lines look like a salamander when they drew it out. And so you put Jerry plus salamander together, you get gerrymander. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yep. And that's going to wrap up this hour of Jansen.